and gentlemen, the Gungans and Droids, and bald-headed inquisitors, we got a late-night episode of Arnold Howlnet News. <laughs> the only news you'll ever need, because you have no other choice. And as I, as I was wrapping up, getting ready for the Carbonite sleep, uh, this showed up. It looks like we got the next confirmation of the new Conquest unit, and it's going to be a ship, and it's going to be everyone's favorite legendary in Galaxy Heroes, the Grand Inquisitor. <laughs> Actually, I'm making a couple of assumptions here. Uh, I will say this is definitely a messy kit reveal. A lot of details missing here. This is going to be more of a trust me, bro moment. <laughs> uh, I, I hear things, right? There's usually a lot of murmurs and rumors that go around. And I keep tabs, but I don't report every single one of those because you don't want to make a habit of that. I did hear about this quite a few months ago about allegedly a new ship coming, the Scythe, as it's gonna be called. And from what I heard a couple months ago, it's weird that I got a report on this, but from what I heard, it's supposed to be the Conquest unit and it's supposed to be piloted by Grand Inquisitor, perhaps some other folks as well in the Inquisitor's faction. But just, I wanna say this is just, this that's the street cred news there. Unfortunately, developers did a poor job listing what the crew is. <laughs> and they didn't really write how it's gonna be acquired. So for right now, take what I have as a grain of salt, but it is confirmed we are getting a brand new ship and it also kind of leans into the, the street rumor that this is a conquest unit because basically, long story short, we're kind of getting a second malevolence type of fleet. What makes the malevolence so great? spawnable crewless vulture droids and you cheese the opponent that's kind of what we're getting here there's gonna be a lot of tie fighters on the fleet here and the fleet that it looks like it's designed to bolster here is supposed to be the executrix well funny enough we had a, a second conquest inquisitor ship early on this year and yes of course it works great with the executrix but uh it really at the end of the day is greatly benefiting the chimera for a faster insta kill okay billy what that leaves the executrix out in the open with not a lot of ships left over well and that's why they're adding this spawnable tie fighter synergy going on her and i guess it also says bolster the executrix fleet so it's gonna be kind of interesting and that's why i think it's gonna be kind of a malevolence type of fleet because if, there's not a lot of ships just like the separatist but you can make stuff happen with some leftover uh with some leftover ships and some spawnable units here and the cool thing is there's like a fear mechanism going on here which is the first time they're bringing the fear into the situation for ships here so let's just go ahead and read all the uh, the kits here all this is not very helpful the questions i have aren't really being asked <laughs> but what else is new we know how these dev q and a's go about nowadays anyways take a look at the base with the ga60s laser cannon deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict defense down for two turns then gain 20 percent terminator now I know you're probably juicing. Oh, is this gonna be a new profundity counter? Uh, likely not. I don't know, but you're not gonna get the turn meter uh, because the profundity is the anti-turn meter all across the board on both sides. If the target is a Jedi, a lot of anti-Jedi stuff here. This attack can't be evaded. When scoring a critical hit, grant a random Imperial TIE Fighter for a for two turns. That doesn't already have it. Um, I'm curious to see how this ship is, this new Executrix Malevolence 2.0 fleet is gonna sit in the meta. Uh, we're kind of coming off the previous conquest of Ben Solo. I maybe I should wait, wait till later on the, after we're done reading here. Ben Solo, not really inspiring a lot of people right now. And um, I'm not sure what the purpose of this is going to be, unless there's another fleet that's going to be coming around. But right now, I feel like we have plenty of we have plenty of capital ships to go around. But I, you know, I'm happy to see that at least we're giving the we're giving both Imperial capital ships some sort of fleet to work on. Anyways. Special one, intimidating flyover. So basically they took inspiration from the Kenobi opening scene when they brought the Inquisitors on the anchor head. You see that intimidating flyover that happens in the first episode of Kenobi. Cooldown of three. This spell, all buffs on all enemies. Great, I'm always a big fan of mass buff the spells here. Recovered 30% health and protection. All Empire ships gain one stack of formation, maximum of 30 for each buff this spelled for two turns, which can't be copied. And formation, new stats effect here. 10% max health, offense, and potency, and whatever the ship uses an ability, gain 1% terminator for each stack of formation. So when you're getting potentially 30 stacks, 30% terminator is kind of a nice chunk of change to be working with there. So, all right, cool. All right, let's just keep moving here. Let's see, we have predatory instincts, cooldown of three, a lot of weird stuff baked into this kid here with this ability right here. Target ally recovers 50% health and gains protection. So kind of like Emperor Palpatine shuttle, it's always great having something that can kind of bounce you back up and then the scythe uses the ga60s laser cannon against the target enemy so calling itself to assist 
This attack has a 75% critical chance. This turn, if the target is debuff, which I suspect, it'll be a good chunk of debuffs going on over there. And if this attack scores a critical hit, here's where the fear comes in. Inflict fear on target enemy for one turn. So the first time we are seeing fear inside of ships, you know, one thing about ships, the meta is a lot slower to the evolve unlike character metas. I mean, fear is a 2000, what is that? 18 mechanic or whatever it is, uh, 2019. Eh, it took a couple years and now it's inside of fleets. And as we know, fear was huge on the character meta here. And uh, and it's, so inflict the target enemy with fear for one turn, which can't be dispelled and can't be evaded by Jedi enemies. And if this attack defeats the target enemy and the ally capital ship is the exact, so again, you know, I know you might want to trade his Chimera. It's directly calling out the Executor. So really all the big synergy is tied in that capital ship. The target ally gains four seconds for two turns and inflict all enemies with fear for one turn, which can't be copied, dispelled, or evaded. So I, I know we're kind of going on a hunch, but a fear on everyone is kind of a big deal. I'm just trying to think, um... You know, maybe people are going to get, maybe a lot of people are going to get this ship and it's, I'm just trying to think where, at least that end game, not everything has to be end game relatable, but at end game, I'm trying to see where would this fleet kind of fit in right now, unless they're planning on, you know what? This reminds me, remember when the uh, TIE Interceptor came out, they didn't expand fleet state. It was kind of like, all right, what's the point of this ship? Because we don't need that many tools at our disposal. Well, then what, what do you know? The time, once the Interceptor came out, they expanded it. And the Interceptor became a lot more appreciative of fleet. So who knows? You might be moving to like a four fleet system in Grand Arena, not too far down the road here. So that's, keep that in mind. That was one reason why we weren't crazy about the Interceptor when it came out, but it made more sense once it uh, came into the game and things changed. Moving on though, got a unique ability, two moves ahead. Allied Empire ships gain 20% max health and offense and 10 speed. And remember, we're gonna do a little reminder, the Executrix, it's meant to keep a turn meter train rolling. It's once they get rolling, kind of not exactly reminiscent of Imperial Troopers, but they're quick and they can get some fast plays moving, getting all these extra uh, speed and offensive bonuses. And on top of that, Executrix feeds extra turn meter and speed or uh, damage. It's gonna be kind of nice. If the enemy capital ship is a Jedi, so likely Kenobi, <laughs> not too many Jedi enemy capital ships, unless they're planning on bolstering Mace Windu in the next upcoming months. Allied Empire ships gain an additional 70% max health. At the start of the battle, all Empire allies gain a stack of formation, and Imperial TIE Fighter allies instead gain stacks of formation equal to the number of Allied Imperial TIE Fighters. And it's going to get interesting with all this here. Let's keep reading, though. These stacks can't be copied, spilled, or prevented, and are moved at the end of the battle or when the Scythe is defeated. But here we go. Where is that malevolence cheese I was talking about? You got it right here. If the Allied capital ship is the Executrix, at the start of the battle, summon two Cruelist Imperial TIE Fighters. And while an ally Imperial TIE Fighter has foresight, this is dirty. This is downright dirty. You, you guys have at least experienced this once in your Galaxy Heroes life cycle. They are inflict with marked. And I'll explain what the, oh gosh. That is just pure dirtiness. The first time an allied Imperial TIE Fighter defeats a ship, all allies gained 100% turn meter. I don't know if that's going to include the capital ship, but if so, that is uh, pretty gnarly. Reinforcement, surprise and fear. Inflict speed down, which can't be evaded or resisted on Jedi enemies for two turns. Eh. But the allied capital ship is executrix. This is why this might be nice. Inflict fear on all enemies for one turn, which can't be copied, dispelled or evaded and summon two cruelest Imperial TIE fighters. Great. Seeing that this is on everyone, not just Jedi, this is going to be a solid reinforce ability. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head if this is going to be the starting ship in the Executrix lineup or a reinforcement unit. Point I'm getting at, even though unfortunately the developers could not clarify it, this does feel like a conquest type of fleet. It's meant to create a whole brand new fleet essentially out of the Executrix. Some really dirty mechanics. AoE fear or fear in everyone when it's coming into the reinforcements and other ways to get fear and spawnable TIE Fighters. Now, let me just quickly remind you on why uh, this is gonna be quite interesting here. So uh, let's pull up the Executrix first. So with the Executrix, there's a lot of things working and it's fair, it's gonna pair very well with this here. So with the lead here, you're getting extra offensive capabilities and this is where like they have a little train. Allies also gain 20% turn meter whenever any ship is destroyed, allied or foam. And Tarkin with executive order, 
feeds turn meter to the team and gives them offense up so that's going to pair well with all these offensive and speed increases and also there's some turn meter gain opportunities here but the reason why uh oh here we go they it looks like they updated it there we go yeah they updated it so it took him a while I'll, so we do have to confirmation this but you know <laughs> If you're posting a kit reveal late at night, at least make sure you tell us how you get it. <laughs> and it shows us the full crew as well. But the reason why the mark on the TIE Fighter is just one of the dirtiest things I've ever seen. TIE Fighter, this is actually not, you should be aware, aware of this. When, they, when the Executor, Piet ship came out, one of the biggest counters was getting the TIE Fighter to dodge and feed Malevolence Terminator with the unique ability here. Where is it at, right? Uh, no, 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 not that one. Here we go. You're going to grant 25% terminated to the allied capital ship whenever the ship evades an attack and it's doubled for empire capital ship. So every time these TIE fighters are die dodging, you're giving 50% terminator to the executrix. And that means a really fast opportunity to get into that ultimate for the executrix and then see all the TIE fighters rain death and above with Imperial assault. So when you're getting that mark going on here, uh, it's going to be pretty nuts when they have foresight. They're going to have mark on them. So you're forced to go after them. Where normally we try to avoid hitting them until like the last moment. They're becoming taunting characters. And when you're getting spawnable Imperial TIE Fighters, there's a lot of cheese to be had. So, and here's the confirmation. They're glad they finally updated it. Uh, they must know. I was, they probably know I was ranting about this. So the crew is going to be Grand Inquisitor and the Fifth Brother. One of the problems that a lot of people are going to have. Where is the Grand Inquisitor? The looks like this is the longest period of time between legendary events. Like legend, is th that wasn't a real legendary event, but we'll just qu air quote it for right now. We're still not seeing the Grand Inquisitor. I suspect November, who knows? And then the Conquest unit is gonna be the site. So there you go. Looks like the street cred news was right. So <laughs> they got some problems over there at CJ, I guess, keeping the, the tight ship there. Nonetheless, Looks interesting. Uh, ships are always kind of hard to get people motivated. As it currently stands, I'm trying. To, I'm having a hard time seeing um, where this fleet is going to sit in the meta. But keep in mind, there might be uh, a new fleet down, or maybe Mace Windu is going to become a lot better, and you're going to want to have this ship to address that. Or they might be extending fleet defense to four, and you're going to need four on defense, four on offense, and maybe a couple more. So open your minds a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit of kind of the Inquisitor tie interceptor that we had earlier on this year. But nonetheless, I like seeing that all of the Imperial capital ships are going to be gainfully employed. So hopefully you enjoyed this late night episode of Arnold Holland News. The only news you'll ever need because you have no other choice. Let me know your thoughts down below and uh, we'll keep you updated as things go along. But until then, always remember, oh, it's great to be in the Empire today.